Hello, everybody, and、um, thank you for having me here today. It is a great honor to、uh, be here this morning、um, to to really、um, participate, starting off with Dr. Mark Houston, and realizing that we're all basically saying the same thing, isn't it?、Uh, that、uh, inflammation is the cornerstone of everything bad you don't want to get. If there's a If there's a degenerative disease with a vowel in its name, likely it's based on inflammation. And where my life is taking me、uh, at this point is I'm paying attention to what is going on in the gut. I'm actually part of the medical history that I take has to do with asking people how are their bowel movements of all crazy things for a neurologist. Why on earth would I be doing that? And the reason I do that is because we now understand this intimate connection between things going on within the gut and things going on within the brain. I actually had a patient not too long ago, and as part of his history, I said, "Well, how are your bowel movements?" And he said,、oh, "It's a terrible thing." And I asked him, "Well, what do you mean by that?" He said, "Every morning, like clockwork, eight o'clock, I have a perfectly wonderful bowel movement." I said, "Well, what's the problem?" He said, "Well, I don't get up till nine, so I said that's really present a problem." I'm going to、um, open up a little bit here.、Uh, Dr. Amen did such a wonderful job about personalizing his presentation. I thought I would、uh, let you know a few things about my life, and I am on sabbatical since March the first, and from my clinical practice and.、Uh, Interestingly enough, next month,、uh, Dr. Amen was talking about Dr. Dale Bredesen's work,、uh, reversing Alzheimer's in nine of ten individuals at the Buck Institute in、um, just north of 40 miles north of San Francisco. And as fate would have it, Dr. Perlmutter will be there、uh, next month,、uh, meeting with these individuals to take things to the next level in my life, hoping that I remain engaged in the academic pursuit. So, if Dr. Amen is right, then maybe my brain will be、uh, here for a few more years to come. I'd like to just talk about changing perspective. I want to change your perspective today in a very big way. I want to really relate things gut-related to things brain-related. As Dr. Houston so eloquently talked about early this morning, <coughs> things heart-related. This division of the body into its composite parts, this Descartes model of relegating the bellows to the lungs, the pump, the heart, etc., doesn't work. We don't need to embellish this reductionist mentality any longer. The body works in a holistic way; all the parts are connected, and that's the perspective I want to change for you、uh, today. So I use this image of a parrot, and you're probably wondering why, because I'm going to tell you that it isn't a parrot. It, it, let's just say for a moment that it is something else. Let's say it's a beautiful woman, for example, and I'm going to tell you that it is a, a beautiful woman. Then the long tail sticking out to the right side of your screen is actually her left leg. The middle part sticking up is her right knee. The top of the parrot's head is actually her left elbow draped over her head. And that's what we're seeing here. So you won't look at this parrot the same way again, will you? I've changed your perspective. There's no going back. Now, let's take a look then at this notion of the brain. These brain-related events. This is the world in which I live, where there's 5.6 million Alzheimer's patients, and there is no pharmaceutical fix. Where autism has increased seven to eight fold in just the past 15 years, where depression affects millions of Americans—30 million Americans, 14% of whom commit suicide—and ADHD affects 4% of the adult population, we don't have brain answers because we're looking in the wrong place. The answer for these and other challenging brain disorders may very well lie within the gut. And not just in the gut itself, but contained within these hundred trillion microbes, the human microbiome that call our intestines their home. This is a brand new opening for us, a brand new ability for us to leverage the most meaningful, leading-edge science to finally gain access to dealing with these challenging issues. Now I've been a neurologist and involved in neurosciences since I published my first paper when I was 19 years old in the Journal of Neurosurgery, and it, it has not only been my my passion and my profession, but it's been a personal issue as well. I took to heart that the number one issue that Dr. Amen put up on the screen in terms of risk 
is family history. I buried my father a month ago with Alzheimer's disease at age 98. A Leahy Clinic trained neurosurgeon.